Hey everyone, welcome back to the uh, channel. Um, so today's job is to uh, start roughing in our shower trays. So we made the decision in all of our bathrooms to go for shower trays rather than like do a wet room, just because it just makes it a little bit easier to control the water flow. And um, we really like the design of these uh, shower trays that we got. So what I'll do is I'll pop a link in the description to these. Um, they're a Villaroy and Bach unit. Um, and they come in all different sizes, but the perfect thing about these is there's a hundred millimeters all the way around the trays that can be cut to fit awkward shapes. So we're lucky, obviously, with the uh, master ensuite bathroom that we can go for our smaller tray there, which is a 900 by a meter. Um, and that little guy uh, will go in. We don't have to cut anything with that because it's going into a simple corner that we've already designed. But for the other two shower trays, they're going into the old part of the house where there was already shower trays in. So we need to cut them. Um, in our uh, main bathroom, we have 1660 millimeters um, of, uh, of an opening uh, by 1.1 meters. And then in the other bathroom, we have like 1360 by 900 that we need to get to. So we went for a 1400 by uh, 900 um, shower tray on the far left. And then the large one there for the main bathroom is a 1700 by a meter. Um, so these are a really, really nice unit because you can cut them. Uh, they have a nice kind of finish. They're kind of very low profile. So when we go in with our floor, our floor is 15 mil thick, and then we have a two mil underlay to go underneath. That's at 17 mil. So these guys are only about 40 mil uh, thick. So it'll be a very small upstand. But then we can also have enough there that we can put a glass panel down for our shower screen in each of the areas and um, just to uh, avoid any splashing out onto the floor. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to go and take our measurements for each of our rooms and we're going to unwrap these guys now. I'll show you a little bit more of the trays so you can get kind of the idea of the design and then we're going to go and cut them to fit. Okay, so this is um, our shower tray. This is the large shower tray that we have for the main bathroom. So as you can see, it's a very, very low profile uh, little unit. Um, you can barely see, and the camera probably won't pick it up. There's a fall into the waist there, but it's very, very minimal. So you've got about a 45 millimeter buildup on this tray. So we're gonna run our floor in, which is gonna be approximately 15 mil with a two to three mil underlay. So we'll have 18 mil up on the tray, but we're actually gonna lay the tray onto our, um, screed when it's all poured we're gonna we're gonna um connect it down onto the screed glue all of that down so it's a nice firm level base that we're putting it onto and it'll be fully insulated underneath um and then we'll be able to tile down over this with our tile we're doing herringbone tile uh down over this on on three sides and then our glass will come down to actually meet the tray now as i said these are great trays from villa Rainbach because you can actually cut them so as you can see here i've already done my measurements and i'll, I'll show you that in a second but we basically have 100 mil that we can cut off on this so i've measured in 85 millimeters here and we're going to cut that with the with the skill saw shortly so we're in two minds then about what we need to do and i'll explain in a second and why that is because we can cut off 85 on that end that's perfect that gives us plenty of play with these when you're running them into a wall you need to leave a five mil tolerance either side so we need to make sure we have five mil uh, on either side if we're running it into the wall but we don't necessarily need to do that because of the way that the, the renovation is going we have a hundred mil board 102.5 millimeter board that's consisting of 12 and a half mil of standard plasterboard and then a 90 mil insulated piece on the back of that in our bathroom so what what we can do is we can take off the 85 that we have on the tray already marked and then if i show you the actual bathroom itself we have the option of either cutting uh, the tray and leaving it in flush with the walls here that we have all the plastered walls or if we want to we can actually lever the tray in underneath and let it run underneath the wall so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to cut the piece of 85 millimeters off. And then I'm going to offer this up to the uh, tray area uh, here, just to see how it all fits in. Now, what I also have is I have just a few uh, off cuts of four by two. Those four by twos are exactly, exactly 99 millimeters high. And we're gonna have a hundred mil build up here on the floor. So they're pretty much bang on. So if we want to cut it flush with the wall, we can pop them in temporarily and cut the other side of the tray 
and then basically uh, that will that will give us a, a, um, a, a, an idea of what it's actually going to look like finished when it's in. So we make sure that we have our five mil all the way around. Obviously, our tile is going to beat that because our tile is nearly ten mil thick, and then we'll have our uh, our glue in behind that as well. So what we're going to do next is we're going to cut that eighty five off, and we're going to offer it up and just see how it all suits. Okay, so we've cut all of that now. So this is just the one side that we're going for. So as you can see, the makeup of the inside of the actual tray itself. So you've got a ply base there within the frame and then you've got your foam. So um, what we did here is we cut it with our, with our circular saw. We took our 85 millimeters off. Um, and then what we did is we just got a little bit of a sanding block just to run along there. Now again, probably didn't really need to sand it. But you know, it's just to give that fit, just kind of refine the finish a little bit. What we'll do with this is we will put a sealer onto this uh, before we install. So we'll just, just to make sure we don't have any water ingress because the worst thing that can happen is that we get water ingress into this section here. And obviously our tile is going to come down. We're going to be tanking the wall and all that. And then we'll have our bead of silicone. But just for a bit of extra peace of mind, we'll put a piece of, uh, just get a bit of sealant clean it all the way flush along that just to kind of create that finish again around here and um, just give us a little bit of extra protection so let's go and dry fit it okay so here we have it and um, we have our uh, tray just fitted in there so what i did was i just grabbed a few of our uh, four by twos uh, just one on your side just to slide it in and obviously our pipes are running underneath there so that's pushed right into the back so as you can see a little bit of off cut of plaster there so we'll, we'll just trim that off once the screed and all is poured and just do a little bit of notching with the multi-tool. Um, and then what we'll have to do is, obviously this is running in underneath here now, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that to be honest with you because there's, there's a bit of play there with the wall, so that's perfect. So we have plenty of room there. And then what we can do is, once the screed goes in, that's gonna bring us up pretty much level to where the bottom of the plaster is. So what we'll do is we'll notch the plaster out with the multi-tool. And what we can do is we can effectively lever this into position. So hopefully I won't be on my own, get a bit of help. We can put a, basically stand the tray up at this, at this side here and then drop it down. So slot it in and drop it right down. And that will give us uh, that nice little finish right at the, at the plaster. Obviously we're gonna tile them down over it, over it and over that side, so it'll be tiled on all three sides. And then we have uh, a glass piece going in along here to about this point, just give us enough room to get in. Um, so that I'm, I'm pretty happy with that right now. So that's kind of how it goes. Worst case scenario is, and I don't want to do it unless I really have to do it, is to cut this side here, uh, the left-hand side. So we've taken 85 off here. We've still got another 15 mil that we can take off there as per the manufacturer's guidelines. So we've still got 15 mil on this side and 100 mil on this side if we need it. But I really don't want to have to do that. This tray actually arrived, um, I think I said previously it was a 1700 by a meter. It's actually an 1800 by a meter. I just double checked and the 1700 only comes in uh, a 900 mil wide. And we wanted the widest that we could because uh, this wall here, we're trying to finish as flush as we can to this wall. So I don't really mind there being a little bit of a kind of extra space there because even if we wanted to, we could run our glass to the floor rather than onto the edge of the shower tray um, and just put a bead along where the glass meets the shower tray just to kind of fill that out and kind of keep our line with the wall, if you understand. So that's how that goes in. So that one obviously needs to be cut. We've cut that. I'm very, very happy with that. What I need to do now is I need to mark exactly where the waste is. So I'm gonna mark it at that point because I'm happy there. There's a bit of a gap there and obviously I need to trim the uh, plaster a little bit there anyway. So I'm going to mark our waste there and our plumber is in then to fit out all of our waste for our showers and our sinks so and our basins. So we'll have that marked, he'll run this pipe. And then what I'll do is I'll be putting in the waste um, then ready for the TLA insulation to be poured and then our screen to be poured. Now, what we're actually gonna do as well is we're gonna use a little bit of our old fascia and soffit uh, boards that we have there. Some of the, we have some extra 
lengths of our treated timber. We're gonna make a little bit of shuttering. So we're gonna make a box to sit down over our waste. And the reason for that is once we pour our TLA on our screed, we don't want that sitting against our waste unit because it's gonna mean we have no opportunity to make any small fine adjustments before we install the shower tray. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make um, a little shuttering box that's gonna come up over 100 millimeters high off the floor. So basically means all of the insulation and the screed will pour around that. Um, and then we'll pour all of that and then we'll take that out and we'll have a cavity in our floor uh, with our waste sitting in it. So if we need to make any small adjustments, we can do that, not a big issue. Um, and then at the end, what we can do is we can grab a little bit of uh, 90 or 100 mil PIR and just cut it around our waist nice and neat and tidy and slot that down. And then that will finish flush with our screed and we can pop our, um, we, we can pop our shower tray down then we've got a nice clean finish. So I'm gonna go and mark this now and then I'm going to mark the other shower tray for our master ensuite because we don't need to cut that. And then we're gonna go and cut our other tray ready for uh, the guest ensuite. That has to be cut on both sides right now because we don't have an insulated board on those walls. Okay, so this is the shower tray for our master ensuite. Um, so with this tray, um, we don't have to do any cutting. So that's better for us. Um, we've got our doorway coming in there and we've gone for this. This is a 900 uh, by 900 tray. So, the reason for that is our growing mixer uh, main control is 450 mil center to our wall here on the right hand side. Um, so that means that when we pop this in, we're gonna pretty much have it perfectly lined up with the waist of the, of the shower tray. So it'll look nice and uniform. You kind of get the vibe now at this stage from watching our videos that we want everything to be very, very crisp and very clean lined. So, um, so that's very, very important that we get that as close as we possibly can. So um, what we've done here is just with the bits of styrofoam that came off the package, I just popped two of them down just to give us a bit of height on this. Obviously it's gonna be coming up to above the block line there where the plasterboard is. Um, but this is just gonna give us an idea of where our waste is going. So what we're gonna do is with this one, I left all the, uh, this, the great thing about these shower trays is they're double wrapped. So they're, they've got heavy packaging on the outside with styrofoam and then they're packaged inside of that um, with the little, uh, the little shower um, tray cover there uh, connected onto the shower tray and then they've got blue wrapping. So I'm gonna leave that on because the, the more stuff on this, uh, the less likely it is going to get damaged. Um, but I am popping all of these in our bathroom upstairs, which is pretty much ready to be painted. So we won't have a lot of bodies kind of moving in and out of there when people are back on site. So um, so this is this is in here now. So as you can see, we've got a nice bit of uh, space there between the window and the shower itself. We're gonna have a full screen right across here, right to the edge, edge to edge. Um, and then we're going to tile uh, literally all along this wall and along this wall to this point and put in a nice uh, chrome or brushed steel bead to finish that off. And then we have a nice walkway here. Our vanity is gonna be going in here. Our vanity will finish somewhere in the region at this point here. So this leaves us plenty of space in this area uh, to come in and walk into our shower. So um, what I need to do now is mark this on the floor. We're gonna be popping our waist in uh, at this point and running it straight out uh, here. So what we'll probably need to do is, and I'll see when the plumber is on site, we can go through this. Um, we've got a hundred mil build up. We don't need a huge flow or a huge fall on the pipe uh, because it's just water. And we've got a high flow waste going into this. So everything's gonna move out quite quickly. So we don't need a huge kind of drop. So I don't think we're gonna need to dig anything into the floor. If we do, we might need to dig just in underneath here to get underneath our pipes, which are feeding our vanity unit here. Um, but the great thing is all of our floor insulation, our liquid floor insulation going in, any of those kind of small trenches, we can just let that run over those. We don't have to go and fill in with concrete like we did with our uh, soil uh, pipes coming out of our toilets. So, um, so if we need to do that, we can do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this now, and then we're gonna move on to our uh, last bathroom which is going to need to be cut on both sides okay so this is our last bathroom so uh, this is our guest ensuite so it's a nice compact little bathroom not too small and um, so basically our width 
from left to right is 1250 um, and as we come out uh, we're only going to put in an 800 mil deep tray here it's a little bit smaller because we want to leave, leave enough room for the door and our vanity unit and i'm standing basically where the toilet is going to be so we've got 1250 and then we're actually quite consistent we're 1250 on the main bathroom there was actually a four mil uh, run on the wall so we were um, 1640 on the inside and 1644 on the outside so it's very marginal but this is actually bang on so we've 12 uh, we've actually got about 1255 and 1255 so we're going to do it at 1250 1250 um, on our cuts now our tray itself is a 1300 uh, mil wide and what I'll do is I'll pop a link in the description to where we bought the trays from actually a company based in germany and they're really good value they were about half the price of what we got quoted in ireland so um so this tray here it should say it on the tag that we have yeah so we have a uh 1400 by 80 so we have 1400 by 80 so we need 1250 so we need to basically take off 150 mil um i don't believe they do a 1300 now that i recall so they don't do a 1300 in this so we had to go for a 1400 by 80. Um, so that, that basically means we'll take off 75 on either side. So keep it nice and consistent. Um, and then what we'll do is, as I said with this one, we don't have any play at the wall area because uh, they're just standard slabs, uh, standard uh, um, water, water um, moisture boards that we put onto the wall. So we don't have, we have 12 and a half mil underneath, but I'm not gonna go and notch 12 and a half mil boards. Uh, um, because there's not enough to uh, gain on it. So we're going to cut this down to size to fit exactly uh, as we need it. So what we'll do is we're going to unpackage this and I'm going to just uh, show you guys uh, cutting it. Now, normally what they would recommend with this is you have a track saw and you cut it with your track saw, do your lines, get your track saw, clamp it down and run your saw along. Unfortunately, I don't have a track saw. I just have uh, our circular saw or skill saw. So I'm just going to do a freehand. But as I said, we are going to be tiling down over this and we've got a quite a thick tile and then obviously our tile adhesive or glue is going to build that out as well so we don't really have a whole lot to worry about um and we can caulk all the edges as well so it'll be nice and neat and tidy so let's go and cut it That's 
very, very important. But I'm very, very happy with that. Now, what I would say is, if you're cutting with your saw, um, start to cut on the face that's going to be pointed out next, if you understand. So, um, the, the face that is going to be uh, viewable as you walk into your bathroom, just basically start that from that side. If you start from the opposite side, once you get to the end, which is effectively the face that's going to be pointing outwards, you can get breakaway. So we do have breakaway just in this section here. So we have breakaway here uh, in this section. Uh, now that's not a big deal because we're going to be able to uh, we're going to be able to, to, to see all that there anyway. So that's not too that's not too much of a problem. Um, but that would be one thing I would recommend to do. Um, but you know, very very happy with that as you can see. It's all nice and consistent, nice and neat. Everything's still perfectly fine here. Um, our waist section is the most important thing. So we need to mark that on the floor now. And the only other thing that I did notice with this was that whether it's a, some type of weakness in the fiberglass, this section here actually broke away as we were cutting. So we were cutting down here and we've actually got a break away here. Now that is about 10 mil. So our tile is about 8 to 10 mil thick and then we have our glue which is going to be about 3 to 4 mil thick. So that's not an issue for us because we're running our tile down anyway. But if you were doing something else, you know, any type of uh, you know, like thinner material, uh, that's going to be an issue for you. Now I'm sure you can get an epoxy to fill in. The only problem is you're going to have possibly an inconsistency on colour. And this has the uh, anti-slip on them as well. So there's a texture on this. Can get it out that we decided to pay extra for it, it was about 70 quid a tray and um, just for safety. You're not going to have that. Now, I know it's right up against the wall, but these three trays cost us in the region about 1700 euro shipped and including VAT. So I would expect that not to happen, but I guess it's just one of those things with the fiberglass, you know, there could possibly be a weakness there. Um, but yeah, but other than that, I'm very, very happy to clean. It cuts it nice and clean. As I said, if you have a track saw, use the track saw. It gives support to the edge, so possibly there's less chance of breakage. Um, but we don't have that. We just have our, our, our circular saw. So we've used it. There's a new blade in that as well, so uh, it's as good as it can be. Um, so all we need to do now is try off it. Uh, as I said, I will pop a description, uh, in the description about, about these trays. There's a little link. So that's the tray dry fitted now. So um, obviously it's got to be a hundred mil off the floor area here. We just have our two pieces of wood just to uh, to lift that up over the pipes. So as you can see, we haven't made it too tight. So we've got at least five mil um, of clearance there, and the same on the other side. We've got five mil of clearance there. Um, so our tile will come down now. You know, this tray is going to end up, the bottom of it will be sitting flush with the bottom of the green board there once the screed goes in. And I think one thing we did have a quick think about was, you know, how do we, do we fit this on, you know, some form of a base that you can buy? So I know you can buy legs for these, a little frame. But when we really thought about it, we said, you know, we're going putting in insulation in the floor. It's going to be poured in. It's going to perfectly encapsulate the floor. We're going to put our underfloor heating pipes in and then we're going to pour our screed, our liquid screed. So we're going to have a perfectly level screed going into the house, laser level screed. So rather than play around with the fact that maybe the subfloor here is a little bit off, obviously we have plaster and stuff like that that's stuck to it. You know, with the best will in the world, we've taken most of it off, but sometimes there can be little bits left over. So with a screed, we have a nice clean screed. So what we can do is we can layer, um, we can we can layer tray straight onto the screed, and we know that it's going to be perfectly level. So what we will do is once the screed is uh, is poured, we'll lay this down, we'll bond it, and we'll connect in our waste. So obviously our waste being in a shuttered box and all kind of accessible, that'll be perfect. So what we, with this one, we're, we're going to run our waste from this point here. It'll run in line with the pipes and straight out under into a gully and away to our water treatment system. Um, so I'm very, very happy with that. Um, you know, when you walk into the bathroom, you, this is all going to be flush. We're going to have our floor right in. 
it's a very nice clean uh, cut as well on that overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with it as i said we had a little breakaway this little guy here as you can see but once our tile goes on that's going to cover that and we'll have our silicone bead as well all the way around so again nothing to be worried about if you guys are buying one of these trays or a few of these trays and you're cutting you may not have that issue and um, that's just something i've come across so very very happy with that that's our third tray that's so that's all of them done We've done our cuts, two on this one, no cuts on the one for our master ensuite, and the single cut for our uh, main bathroom. So I'm gonna pop this one upstairs with the uh, with the other tray so uh, we don't have any damage whatsoever. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Um, as I said, I will pop a description uh of of the of what we've done here uh just in the description box i'll pop some information in there i'll pop a link to where we bought the trays from um so you can see uh exactly how much they will cost there is so many different sizes that you can go for as i said you can have anti-slip as well if you want on them and there is the other accessories that you can get with these ones we didn't go for the legs as i've just explained but we did go for the high flow waists they were a little bit more expensive than just a standard waist, but I think it'll be better because we have quite a shallow fall on the tray. We want the water to get away as quickly as possible. So having the high flow waist there is very, very important. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, if you do have any questions, please pop them in the comments. I always try and come back to, to, to each and every comment and we really appreciate the feedback or any questions that you guys have. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe as well. I hope you're enjoying the updates and uh, see you again next time.